Good morning. Buenos dias a todos. Welcome to Holberton's Demo Day. My name, if I haven't introduced myself to you personally, uh, it's Mercedes Diaz. Everyone calls me Mercy. I'm the one that sent the invites <laughs> and the one that may be bugging you later on by email. Uh, thank you so much. I'm the campus director for Holberton here in Puerto Rico. Now, we're super excited. We've been counting the days as the students uh, leading to today, and we are really happy to be able to share their projects with you. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be here today. Uh, please know that whether you're here in person or virtually, uh, we appreciate your presence and participation. Now, if you're not very familiar with Holberton Coding School, I'm going to take just a minute to go over what we are or what we do. Holberton is not a traditional educational institution. You may know that by now. We offer individuals the opportunity to become software developers or software engineers in under two years, in 18 months. Even if they have no previous experience or education in computer science, our program is robust, it's very demanding, and it's divided in two parts. The first part is nine months and it's called foundations. The second part is called specialization, and it's another nine months. Students get to choose from AR, VR, uh, machine learning, full stack web development, and low level languages and algorithms as a specialization. Today's demo day is really unique because it features cohort 19 students that are at the end of the first nine months of the program, and they will be presenting their final projects today. And it also features two students that are, have ended their specialization in machine learning, and they will be presenting their final projects as well. The capstone projects that you will be viewing and experiencing today, because we hope you get to interact with their demos, uh, require that our students use the Holberton framework to assess, identify, and learn about the languages, technologies, and platforms required to solve the pain points or the opportunities their MVP address and deploy those solutions within six weeks. So what you're gonna see today was done and finalized and finished and it works and it was all done in six weeks. So that in itself, it's very impressive. I'm happy to say that all of them raised to the challenge and have excellent projects to showcase here today. As for the format, the students will come up here and give a brief introduction to their project. But the best part, I don't know if I'm, Ivan, the best part comes after they're done up here because they're gonna go to the back and you are, will be able to go to the back and stop at each of their stations and interact with our students, ask questions, do a real life demo, their projects, and who knows, maybe connect for future uh, employment opportunities or present employment opportunities. So hopefully that happens here today. So without further ado, let's welcome our first presentation, Aventuras PR. Aventuras PR is a website that showcases various destinations and experiences in Puerto Rico. It provides information about activities, accommodations, and restaurants available. The website aims to help travelers, as well as locals, to plan their local adventures and explore the rich culture, natural beauty, and vibrant attractions of Puerto Rico. Please welcome from Cohort 19, Lisbeth Garcia. Can y'all hear me? Good? Great. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here this morning. Before presenting Aventuras VR, allow me to introduce myself. I am Lisbeth Garcia, the sole developer behind this amazing web application. Now, a little bit about myself. I entered Hoberton School straight out of high school, and it has been a journey this past nine months. Now, a little bit about this past nine months. I am able to teach new students of Hoberton by being a student tutor as I learned to program as one of the challenges that I encounter here. Alongside with this, I took on the challenge of building Aventuras PR from scratch. This is my final project. Now, a little bit about this final project. I took this project from conceptualization to implementation. My inspiration was a little journey of my own. I have a passion for traveling and I love to travel everywhere and anywhere. Now, I constantly found myself on the struggle of having to switch between tabs, constantly finding from Airbnb, switching to hotels, switching to Google Flights. And this takes a, it's a little bit time consuming, you know? And time is everything in this world. Now, 
other than that, having to choose how to entertain each person in the group is also difficult. Pero, Aventuras Federe got you. As we can see here, we have two versions of how the user can interact with my web application. On the left, we have a we have a list version, and on the right, we have a map version. These are two ways that the user can interact. One is an organized way of looking at the cards and choosing which place do you want to visit. This card has brief information. As we can see here briefly, it has the name, and under it, it has the location, basically the town only. Now, after you press this card, you are presented with information about the place. This could include a gallery of pictures of the place for you to observe, and also information about websites, social media links, as well as service hours. Some of the technology stack that I used was HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap for the, for the front end with the occasional JavaScript. Now for the back end, it was fully developed using Node.js. The timeline for this project was two months. First month, we made, we main focus was research. In this phase, I designed the user interface and user experience alongside the architecture of the website. On the second month, we focused mainly on the deployment and development of the, of the project. Lastly, the challenges. Two of our biggest challenges for this project was hosting and deployment. This, this project requires server-side rendering alongside database management tools. Most of the research that I did previously didn't meet these requirements. After some extensive research, I was able to find a service that provided me that provided me with the efficient tools for me to be able to deploy my project. And today, you get to enjoy this project. And that will be all. Thank you. Thank you, Lisette. Thank you. Great job. I look forward to planning my next vacation on Aventuras PR, so I hope you all get to do that as well. Now, our next presenter is fascinated, listen to this, with missile technologies. Yes, I said missile, like boom, missile. He has created a 2D simulation of how a missile finds a target in a given scenario. The algorithm changes its behavior based on the type of target. The target information is stored in a database that the missile has access to in real time. I am simultaneously impressed and a little scared of this project. Uh, please welcome Norman Padovani. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to talk about my project today. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. I'm an IT professional for over 25 years now. I studied computer science at the University of Puerto Rico Maya West Campus, and uh, but I never actually worked doing that because I found uh, the IT industry part of it, and uh, I was in love with that, and I developed myself around that. I'm a certified Microsoft uh, Technology Specialist, a certified professional, and a whole bunch of other certifications. And now I just decided I want to steer my career in another, another direction, which is coding, which, which I liked when I was at, uh, at college. Um, my roles in this project are, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, my roles are, I am the lead programmer, I am the developer, I am the researcher, I am the tester, because I am the only one. So I did everything. Here's a little bit of a preview. Oh, yeah, let me tell you about uh, why I decided to do this. As a child, I remember looking at the sky and watching planes. And I'm wondering how do they work? How do they get up there? I that happens probably every day. And uh, even with sport cars like Formula One cars, I always wonder how they could go that fast without skipping, you know, in the corners. And video game consoles. I remember when I got my Nintendo, like I was fascinated. Instead of enjoying the game, I was fascinated. How am I able to press the button here? And that character is doing something over there. So I will, I will always wonder how things work, the mechanics of it, how things tick. So that's um, probably the inspiration for this project because I like jet fighters a lot and I like the weapons of it, the weapon systems. 
and uh, that's why I decided to do a 2D simulation of a missile tracking uh, its target. Here's a preview of my project. Here's a user interface. Um, I zoomed it a little because it was too small. On the left, you can see there's a drop-down menu, uh, which has the targets for the missile to track. And on the right, you have the homing guidance and uh, the tracking methods. And here's a little bit of a preview of how, of how it works. And the uh, technologies I used for this were HTML, JavaScript, Canvas, um, CSS, JSON, Fetch for the front end. So you could have like what you just saw. You're welcome to go buy my boot later on to see it in person. And on the back end, which is the real strength of my uh, software, uh, I did it with MySQL, Node.js, uh, .env, and Express. Here's um, a diagram of my software. You have the user interface, which asks the database for the target information. Then it um, checks it out on my JavaScript. It reacts to it, and then with the styling and layout, you can see it on the screen. And then also, you cannot develop a software these days without security. So I did uh, implement some security to it, so no one can access my database. Steps. Well, at first, I was doing a lot of planning. Then I went into the research part of it, which really scared me a little because this project involves a lot of physics and mathematics and calculations. And I had to learn all that and how to translate that into script. So that took a while <laughs> and I did a lot of research about it. And then I did, um, designed the front end, which is pretty simple, as you saw. And then the back end of it, which was uh, the real or the mediest. And then the integration between the two systems. Um, that's basically it. I had some real challenges, starting with the explosion animation. You would think, oh, that's basic. Well, yeah, I had to learn how to create sprites, animate sprites. And if you don't know what that is, is um, pictures of every frame of an explosion in my case. And I had to learn how to animate that and show it to the user in a in a way that it looks you know real like a real explosion that was a challenge also time management because i have my own business so i work full time and to do this i had to really really plan myself around it spend a lot of nights in the morning working with this um, the database integration making the database and the front end communicate was a little bit of a learning curve, but thankfully I, I managed to do it. And the tracking types and calculations, as I mentioned before, it was a little bit of a hassle to just translate the physics of it into coding, which is easier said than done. And yes, that's my presentation. Thank you all. You're welcome to go by my booth. Have a good day. Thank you. Amazing, Norman. Thank you for your presentation. We can't wait to demo your project. I promise no real life explosions are going to happen today. So our next presentation comes from a team. We have seen individual presenters, but here's the first team. Uh, it's a team of three cohort 19 students. Their project is called Expresso. Guess what's about? <laughs> This web app lets you experience the convenience of an online coffee shop where you can effortlessly order ahead and indulge in a meticulous, meticulously crafted brew. Start your mornings hassle-free by picking up your perfectly prepared coffee, ensuring a seamless start to your day. Please welcome Melissa Arroyo, Jadiel Saldaña, and Rafael Vega from Expresso. Hello, hello. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for taking out of your busy, you know, schedule to come here, listen to our projects. We really put everything into this. So hope you guys enjoy it. So basically, like Mercy said, we're going to be talking about our project and you're going to know how, how we came to life and how we came with the idea and how we build it up. 
So right now you're gonna meet our team. Hi, I'm Melissa Arroyo. I was responsible for developing the front end of our amazing app. Before my journey at Holberton, I worked as a teacher uh, because education is one of my passions, but also technology. I always had a curiosity and fascination for it. And that's when I decided to join Holberton so I can somehow combine my two passions and maybe um, create something great about it. Um, I'm really excited. It's been really good so far. And um, thank you for being all uh, here. So my name is Yadier Saldana. Uh, I didn't introduce myself earlier. Um, so basically, I was focused on the back end of this app, uh, the authentication process, how we're gonna store the data in the and the order that we want the data to be stored, right? And uh, I come from a military background. Basically, I joined the army when I was 19. I got off the army and I just saw a huge potential. I got into cryptocurrencies back in 2018, 2017. I saw huge potential in, you know, not just the technology or, or money, but the technology. And I ended up here, you know, just learning and developing stuff and just, you know, eating, you know, the information. So, um, hello everyone. My name is Rafael Vega Rodriguez. I'm part of this awesome team. Um, in this project, I was the lead developer. Uh, I was in charge of the architecture and, um, make um following my peers but uh i'm very grateful to meet these guys here in horberton before horberton i was a data analyst and researcher for a few um years after that i started to teach in a school in caguas i was a computer science teacher uh, so has been related to technology but i never um learned how to code so as a Curious professional as a pro, as a responsible teacher, right? I need to come here, learn a little bit about coding, and here I meet these awesome guys that together we create uh, Expresso. So thank you for being here. What inspired us? I'm gonna. I wanna to. I want to tell you the story behind our Expresso project. It all started with a small coffee shop that we, we used to visit on our coffee breaks here at Holberton. The coffee shop is it was right here in Lote 23, next to this building. We got close to the owner, and he talked about uh, something he wanted to do with his business. He wanted to innovate a little, and also he needed something to help him because he runs the coffee shop by himself in the rush hours he was um, slowing down. So he talked about some web or app that he could automate ordering and payment process. He talked to us um, and we accepted the challenge and that's how Expresso is born. We uh, handle the ordering and payment, uh, the users can create their accounts, uh, get to the menu, the menu is uh, fully there, there are options like sugar, uh, size, and milk, and you can just go ahead and pay. It's really easy and fast to use. You're not going to be more than three minutes um, ordering your coffee. So how would this app work? You know, uh, we um, use some te new technologies. Um, we have three components in our app. Uh, we have the main app that has been built in Flutter. That's a framework of Dart. And that app connect with Firebase and with Stripe. How we do that? Um, in Firebase, we use two services. And we are using the authentication process of Firebase and the storage of Firebase. And so when the user enter to our app, he need to create an account and that is made by Firebase. And all the information of the application is pushed to the database that also is in Firebase. After that process is completed, when the order is uh, uh, ready, so the user need to pay. That's an important process in the in our app. So we connect to a Stripe 
using a Go server. Um, through APIs, we um, show the user a front end created in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and the user can pay from that front end. So that's our um, that's the technology that we use and how we use and um, how those technology connect uh, between. So the timeline, this was fun. You know, we had around two months to build this, but one month we spent, you, you probably guys don't know, but as we build this project, we also have like Holberton tasks. So, sorry. So as we build this, we also have Holberton tasks. So the first month we just spent planning and we actually voted on what technology we want to use. If we, we want to use just CSS and JavaScript or something new and, you know, and challenge ourselves to learn, you know, Flutter, which is specifically for phone apps. So we spent around the first month uh, planning. And as we did the planning, we started the design. We actually grabbed, we did it on a piece of paper. We actually draw everything, like every single page that we wanted to look like in every single detail and once we have every single page to draw down not just the front end how it's going to look but also the back end how we're going to store the data what bot is going to call what uh we started the development which is the actual coding and uh, and after we did the coding we actually did some testing and you guys when you go back there you're going to see a little card which is a fake card from stripe and you can actually test go through the app, order your coffee, and actually pay with the car we will provide. So that, that testing we did, and then we deployed. Um, also, it's already live. So once we deploy, we also go to the life cycle. If we want to add something, we actually develop it, we test it, and then we merge it to the main, right? We, we deploy it. Challenges we overcame, overcome. Uh, I think the hardest was not uh trying to learn a new technology in such small amount of time, but we actually achieve it. Um, time management because we all have different schedules and responsibilities, so that was uh, a challenge. But we also overcome it. And the payment integration, we designed the app when we had it like in the planning phase with PayPal. But it was, we had a lot of issues implementing it. And last minute we changed to Stripe and everything went really well. And to add something real quick and to the challenges, basically as we started building this, Flutter uh, is obviously for, for apps uh, in the phone, but we started building it in different versions. So I was using iPhone, uh, iOS version. He was developing in web. And Melissa was also developing in web. And when, when every time I try to integrate the payment, it breaks. Like, it just red, right? So we had we had a lot of trouble implementing the PayPal payment because it, the SDK is something they, they give you to, you know, to do the payment faster. It was just for iOS. So every time we, we try to run it on the on the web app, it crashes. So we tried it for, for like a week, and we couldn't figure it out. So then we moved to Stripe. And we were able to get it up pretty quickly. So I think that was pretty awesome to actually be there for a week trying to do something. Doesn't work. And then we kind of flipped around. So let's go this route and it, and it worked. And we were able to to make it happen. So it was pretty, it's pretty fun. So thank you, every single one of you, for being here, for taking out of your busy time to listen to us and, you know, to watch our project. And we are really excited to talk to you after, you know, and... Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jadiel and Rafa and Melissa. I don't know about you, but I really need some coffee now. Uh, anyways, now question for all of you. How many of you have played Tetris in the past? Tetris. Good. But have you ever played Tetris 3D? Ah, no hands, right? Well, our next presenter started experimenting with Tetris as a personal project years ago. It's it's funny because he's very young. So when I say years ago, he was in high school. Uh, his current project came about because he was curious to know how a game he normally played in two dimensions would feel and look like in three dimensions. 
This version of Tetris is a Python, Pi game, and NumPy script of a Tetris game with 2D and 3D modes with a semi-classic aesthetic and control system. Please welcome Gabriel Fernandez and his project Tetris 3D. So a bit about myself and the introduction that led me to make this project. So I live in Canoas and I was born in the Pavia Hospital behind there, specifically in the corner window that leads to the highway. I like math, video games, programming, thinking, puzzles, and things that require you to use your brain and not be bored. Uh, I started playing Tetris around 2018. I saw a YouTube video of it by, I think, The Odd Ones Out. And I started playing it on mobile one night when my parents were asleep. And ever since then, I was I knew I was addicted from the first night. So I continued playing it, and eventually my dad got me NES Tetris. And I thought that was a pretty good game. I enjoyed it a lot. I've also liked using Rubik's Cubes. I don't have a lot of these, but this is the genre of puzzles that I really enjoy. I have the... Uh, 4x4, 3x3, 2x2. So I've also watched some YouTubers that do math, like 3 Blue and Brown and Code Parade, but some others like Mythologer. And so fast forward to 2021, July, I was at the park and I watched a video about someone doing 16 games. They were coding three uh, Tetris in C++. And I thought that was an interesting challenge. So I decided to make a small script in Python and Pygame and got a game working. It was only a 2D loop and it was literally just the 2D game. It had no ending and nothing else. But because I was still figuring out what I wanted to do with my life and I was still in high school, it was just another project. But as I was discussing project ideas with my cohort 19 classmates, we were talking and my heart leaned on Tetris. More specifically, I then suddenly had the idea, what if we do it in 3D? And then I was just joking around saying, okay, well, we'll have just like a pool. And instead of having clearing lines, we just clear floors. And as I kept thinking, I kept thinking, okay, what if we make the pieces rotate? in four dimensions, in three. But eventually, I made something that looks like that. So for the technologies, it's all it all runs in Python. For the window, the sound, the keyboard, controls, and pretty much everything, I used Pygame. And for the 3D pieces to rotate, I used NumPy, since engineering 3D rotations from scratch would be too difficult. So the timeline is actually quite long and complicated because I spent doing a lot of separate things at once. So first I cleaned up and made it so the pieces would not rotate into each other. Then I added a title screen that lets you choose between 2D and 3D. Then I decided to code the 3D game with NumPy blocks instead of the 2D, which uses lists of strings. And I first just rendered it orthographically meaning like all of the slices would be on top of each other with no perspective, with the slight ones that are darker at the back. And at first I was going to make it a 10 by 10 by 20 grid, but I realized that that was way too difficult, so I made it a 4 by 4 by 20 grid. I added a game ending, so now when the pieces piled up to the top, the game is over. And I added some perspective, but it was still too difficult to play. Then I wrote some tests for the 3D game. Then in June 1 to 4, I finally rendered all of the slices with their proper sides. And the way I did this was I just came up with the like 1 over X formula where like I imagine that the camera is like some distance from the board and the blocks are all one unit wide in all of the sides. And the sides appear to be 1 over x times the length of it. And then I made some like lattice points for each slides and put them in an array. And then 
drew polygons for all the four adjacent sides or three adjacent sides at the top and a, a rectangle for the front. And that was how I made the 3D rendering. Then I decided to style the screens. So I added borders. I added um, a menu highlight. I added screen. Uh, you could scroll with the keyboard and with a mouse, you could click it because I test. I let some of my friends test the code and they found that the controls were a bit confusing and I wanted it to be an easy, enjoyable experience. I also documented the game a lot. Then I decided to add custom controls, which was stored in a JSON file called uh, keyboard settings.json and made it so that you could have a screen. You could press, click on the button, click on the key, and then that would be the new key. Then I decided to add sounds, but uh, I don't know how to turn on the sound in the monitor. So just give me a second. And added a, oh yeah, so that's it. That's the project. I made a couple of changes to make the game a bit more enjoyable after this. So the biggest challenge and the longest amount of code that I had to write was engineering all the GUI from scratch. There were a lot of times where I was tempted to simplify and couple the code, but there were some parts of the GUI that required slightly different things. Like the title screen menu required arrows to scroll through the levels, but the game over screen menu didn't need anything. And the control screen menu, having to scroll the keyboard to then choose the keyboard settings would not make sense. So at the end, it ended up being long lines of code because I didn't want to use any libraries for Pygame since Pygame GUI was a bit difficult to understand and I was more comfortable writing things from scratch, but that was also a bit of a challenge. And rendering the 3, 3D game from scratch, I thought that was going to be the biggest challenge, but as it turns out, it went suspiciously smoothly because God helped me through things. And uh, making the GUI more comfortable was kind of a challenge and till this day I still don't know how comfortable it truly is and perhaps the most stressful challenge was time management since I am the only one who's doing this project I had to do the landing page I'm doing the blog the documentation the presentation and the project and as you can see this is the amount of lines of code that it has uh in the future I see myself simplifying this game and extending this game to make it more of a an engine of Tetris where people can practice. But uh, I can't exactly make promises since after a few weeks, I'll start a specialization here. So that might take some time as well. So that is all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Great job. I don't know if you, if you were able to read the number, but there's... 1,661 lines of code. So that's amazing. I'm sure we will all be stopping by your table to play Tetris 3D. Now, our next presenter. All thanks to God. Um, to Angel. <laughs> awesome. So our next presenter is about to revolutionize language learning through immersive conversations. If you're like me and you think you're learning French by watching every show that's on French on Netflix and reading the subtitles, that really doesn't work. You need something like what he's about to present. And the project name is TalkMate. TalkMate is an AI assistant that allows the user to adopt a persona tailored to the chosen language. So it ensures fluidity and relevance throughout the dialogue. It offers translation pronunciation guidance, and insightful cultural tips that foster a more profound understanding of the language's native community and traditions. To find out more about TalkMate, let's welcome Angel Carrion. Thank you, Mercy. So good morning, everyone. Um, let me talk about, today I want to talk about TalkMate, your new AI language learning assistant. But before jumping into the application, let me introduce myself. My name is Angel Javier Carrion Torres. I'm from Caguas. Before joining Hobbleton, I studied graphic design at Universidad del Tro. For the past nine years, I've been working in the hospitality industry. So that brings the question, why programming? Well, we live in a 
moment where technology is advancing at a new, at a fast pace. So why not take part of that opportunity? And by mastering a new skill that let me solve problems, gain adaptability, and turn an idea into something useful that helps other people. So that's the mentality that got me into programming. Now, jumping into the application. Where does the idea for TalkMake uh, was born? Imagine that you want to learn a new language, but you wish that there was a new way that feels like chatting with a friend and not just scrolling through a textbook or um, translating word by word. That's how TalkMate was uh, came to life. So with technology like ChatGPT and that makes it easier to learn new stuff, why not use that technology to learn a new language? So with TalkMate, it feels like chatting with a friend. It, a friend that knows the language from inside out. So with TalkMate, you get translation, pronunciation, and cultural insight to help you gain a deeper understanding on the language, the uh, people, and the country. So like you can see in this picture, you as the user, you can send uh, ask just a simple question, and you get translation, pronunciation, and that's it to help you gain uh, know more about the people you're learning from. Technology is used for the development of this application. The first one, Flutter. Flutter is a user interface framework developed by Google, which allows uh, developers to build applications uh, for mobile, desktop, and web from a single code base. Second uh, technology, Firebase. Firebase is a cloud-based platform that allows developers to use uh, services and tools like databases, storage, hosting, and in my case, authentication. And last but not least, and maybe the engine of this application, OpenAI API. This allows a user to access powerful language models, which allow them to integrate natural language processing to the technologies and services. This is a high-level architecture of the how the application is structured. So once you are in the application, the first step will be to create an account. Once you're in, you go redirected to the language selection page, which for now is the home page. After that, you get to the chat interface once you select the language, and you get to chat with the AI. This is where the connection between the API and the user is going to happen. Timeline for this uh, project. Well, our development process is divided by two in two months. The first one is all about research, researching tools, documentation, watching tutorials, getting ready to what you need to make that idea into an application. After that, the second month is all about execution, hands-on. The first week is all about getting the Flutter environment in my computer and start coding the chat interface, in my case, which is the core feature. The second week is all about finishing the core feature um, and the integration of Firebase authentication. Then the first uh, third week is all about building the landing page. In my case, I use HTML and CSS, which is easier and faster to build. And here at Hobbiton, those languages are taught. And last, and last week, the final details, adding another language, documentation to the code base, and making sure the app is working. And it can uh, you can try it on the, on the phone. Challenges on this uh, project. The first one, and the most common one between developers, adapting to a new language. This is, at the beginning, is a little bit hard, but through documentation, tutorials, and practice, you get it done. Also, here at Hobbiton, they teach us a framework that allows us to adapt faster to the new languages and technologies. Second uh, challenge, and the most obvious one, working alone and under time pressure. In my case, I try to avoid big mistakes. Not small ones, but the big mistake that could get me stuck in hours or maybe days. What I did was I just focused on something else, another aspect of the application, and then go back to that same problem. It's not the, maybe the best uh, way to go, because if something depends on that uh, aspect, on that problem, then you can have to have to fix that first to go to the next step. 
but in my case, it worked for me. And last, it's my uh, QR code for the LinkedIn. If you want to try the application or play with it, I'll be in one of those uh, table behind. So thank you. Fantastic job, Angela. Can't wait to learn French using TalkMate. So on to our next presenter. I know we have HR partners and recruiters here in the audience, right? Right, I know who you are. Uh, you will be very interested in this next presenter and his project. It's called Candidate Collection. Candidate Collection is a web application designed for employers and recruiters who want to store and find the ideal candidates for their jobs. The resumes are uploaded and organized by job application, matching with the right candidate. It's as simple as typing the desired skills for the role. Let's welcome Gabriel Pagan and Candidate Collection. Good morning. I'm very excited to talk to you about my portfolio project, Candidate Collection. Before I move ahead, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Gabriel Pagan Mateo. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Puerto Rico, Mayagüez campus. Currently, I am a student tutor here at Hoberton Coding School, where I teach new students about software engineering. My plans are to become a software developer and join the tech industry here in Puerto Rico, as well as continue my studies to become a machine learning engineer in the near future. Now, my role within this project was that of a full stack developer. I was responsible for the conception and the ideas behind this project, the design of the front end user interface and the creation of the server side backend architecture. I want to talk about my application, but before that, I'm going to talk about what inspired me by means of a, a story. I'd like you guys to imagine being a recruiter. It might be easy for some of you, maybe not all of you. Imagine being a recruiter in a company and the hiring manager asks you to find three candidates for them to interview by tomorrow. And you are given about 400 resume files that you have to read in order to find those three candidates. Besides that, those three candidates also have to have at least five of the required skills that are inside the job description. So this is a very time consuming task and you only have less than a day's time. What would you do? What can you do? Well, you could use my web application Candidate Collection. Candidate Collection is an app that lets you store resume files within an account. You can organize them by job applications and you can view each file from each candidate at a glance. Or you could only search for the candidates that you want by using a keyword that's related to the skills that you are looking for. Once you're done searching for the candidates that you uploaded, you can share them to the hiring manager by simply typing in his email and pressing the share button. And there, you're done. You finished your task in less than half an hour's time, all thanks to this web application. The technology that I used for my app includes Python at its heart with the Django framework, which facilitates web development. For the front end, I used HTML, CSS, Bootstrap for customization, and JavaScript for dynamic content. For the back end, I used PostgreSQL for the database and cloud services from AWS to host that database, to also store the resume files in the cloud, and to also host my web application in the internet. The development of my application from conception to launch, I divided into four parts. The first one being research, in which I thought of a problem, identified it, and then I designed a possible solution as a program. Then I built the application. I created the environment and used the tools that I needed to give the app its functionality. Then I tested it to ensure the quality. And finally, I deployed it. And I'm currently monitoring the performance of the app. 
during my development, I had a lot of challenges. Two of them were the most notable. The first one was configuring the environment. I had to download and use a lot of different tools for my application. And sometimes these tools were incompatible and I, it would create conflicts. And I needed to get through this challenge in order to give certain functionality to my application. The other challenge was using microservices. When you use a microservice, you're basically taking a third party program and you're adding it to your application to add a certain function. The problem is there's so many different services that you could use that you could get lost in deciding which service is best for you. And, you, and even when you know, you have to learn how to use this service in order to be proficient in it. And I was trying to use at least three in my application. And so this was a very big challenge for me. This is the end of my presentation. I'd like to thank you all for listening. If anybody is interested in my app, has questions or suggestions, feel free to come talk to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, Gabriel. And with Gabriel, we finished the group of foundation students. I'm sure you will agree that they have done a great job and we will be celebrating their accomplishments this afternoon with a graduation ceremony with their friends and family. So now we move to our two specialization students. Both of them have completed all the requirements to graduate with a specialization in machine learning. So we're gonna start with a personalized AI system called Pi. Pi incorporates time management, accountability, and focus functionality to lead us to new levels of productivity, integrity, and accomplishment. This is so cool. Please welcome Sofia Mendez and her personalized AI project, Pi. Hello, I am Sofia Mendez. I am a full stack software engineering and machine learning Halberton graduate. Before Halberton, I studied visual arts for five years, and then I switched to a robotics and engineering high school, which I graduated from, and where I like completely fell in love with programming, and that's what inspired me to come here. So for my project, I created Pi. It is a personal AI system that works as a conversational assistant that is tailored to it helped me satisfy my needs to reach constant self-actualization. It helps me reach new levels of accomplishment, integrity, and productivity within its functionalities. The origin story behind it was I wanted to automate Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I came up with an idea of creating an AI that could help me meet those needs in specific ways when it comes to esteem, love and belonging, and self-actualization. And so I, the original version of this, uh, I decided to create a personal AI chatbot um, that basically integrated a large language model with my own personal data, with only 10 lines of training data where normally it takes at least 400 uh, lines of training data to actually create something that is that had a high accuracy rate like the one that I had, the one that I created. Um, and I presented it in an AI meetup as a guest speaker, and it was so well received that I wanted to continue the project further and like super pack the AI. Um, but ultimately I noticed that the tech that I was using was only limited to ever be a chatbot. It wasn't able to it wasn't able to do the functionalities that I wanted and that I needed. So I decided to update the technologies using OpenAI. I used two models. I used Text Da Vinci and GPT 3.5 Turbo. I also used um, Python for all of the personal AI capabilities and VS code for the editor. So um, I started my development by creating a uh, generative a conversational AI with OpenAI. And then I went and created a, a functionality where you can communicate with Pi to do file handling for you, where it can 
generate code for you. It can create files. It can create an entire code base for you. It can um, basically create your entire application if you wanted to. And then I wanted to, and then I created a task creator, which helps me uh, lead, like, which helps me in keeping myself in like a high integrity level in everything that I do. Um, Focusmate, which keeps me accountable in throughout my workday, and uh, speech to text, which is mainly for when I'm feeling lazy and do not want to be typing all day. So for file handling, uh, what it does is it creates, it extracts code from the generated output that Pi created. Um, it saves it to a file. It you can modify the file name, and it assumes the file extension based on the uh, content of the code. Now for task creation, um, I was facing a problem where I had very unrealistic goals that I would set for myself and that I would wonder why I didn't achieve them. And it's mainly because it is not concrete. It is not a video table thing that I could do. So I wanted to solve it by creating it by uh, integrating with Pi uh, the optionality for me to create a task and have it give me suggestions on how I can concretize a step, the, the task, into more imaginable steps that are realistic and actually achievable. And I also had a, I also wanted to find a way to integrate external accountability and financial stake to my goals and tasks. So uh, what it does is that you give it X amount of money for you to complete a certain task. And then you, uh, you assign a designated accountability buddy for if the task is not completed at the certain due date, the accountability buddy will receive the money where you will lose money if you do not complete the task, which is incentive enough for you actually to like act, be, actualize yourself and actually be high integrity and hold up to your commitments. So for the focus mate, I wanted to create something that could um, help me throughout my workday where I could be able to keep track of what I'm doing throughout the day and I can stay accountable for the things that I need to do. So what it does is I give it a, um, I wanna create like a five minute session, co-working session. And I just wanna look for um, like land chain development a research and like what I can do with that. Okay, so I create the session and I commit to doing that research throughout the time. After the session is complete, it asks me if I, what I did, and it asks me honestly if I actually completed the task, if I, if I actually am in integrity with what I said that I was going to do. If I don't, there's a breakdown on my part and on my commitment. And if so, I create a path forward. What is the thing that I could do to actually complete this task so that I am in integrity with, with my word? And I do that until I complete all of the tasks and all of the work that I need to do throughout the day. And uh, it also has the optionality to, uh, you can talk to it or you can also text with it. Uh, you can message it, and it is much more convenient for me when I'm just, I just don't want to text. The challenges that I had to overcome were, uh, I had, I spent in total of a week trying to debug my code because it is a lot of functionality within within my my program, and it was incredibly complicated to have them work simultaneously um, considering that it's two open AI models that I'm that I was using so I had to separate everything ultimately I was successful and I overcame the challenge thank you this is my project uh, I'm gonna be over there if you want to talk to me and talk to Pi
amazing. I, I, I'm not sure I'm going to use yours because I think I'm going to end up losing money on the accountability thing. I'm going to have to start paying everybody. But anyways, thank you so much. These tools are going to come handy for all of us, I'm sure. Now, our next presenter, also a machine learning graduate, uh, has developed a powerful app that helps users locate nearby hospitals and provide valuable insights into their reviews, right? So the same way you're going to go out for dinner and you want to check out their restaurant reviews, you would do the same thing for a hospital if you had to visit one. It uses advanced machine learning techniques to classify the reviews of hospitals, giving users a quick understanding of the overall sentiment associated with each hospital. With the app's intuitive interface and real-time data, users can easily find and evaluate hospitals in their vicinity, ensuring they receive the best possible care. The name of the project is Better Health, and Jonathan Rivera will be sharing more information about it. Welcome, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Hope you're doing great with the presentations. Um, I'm going to talk about our project, Better Health. But before that, you may be wondering why did I say our project? Well, this project, I didn't do it alone. I had a partner. For work reasons, he couldn't be here with me to the presentation, but I know he's cheering me on from work. So my partner's name is Luis Obregón. He focused on the machine learning model and the backend of the application to utilize that machine learning model. And my name is Jonathan Rivera, and I focus on the front end on the mobile design of the application. Um, before Hoberton, I worked as a manager for McDonald's for six years. Later, I decided I wanted a change of pace. So I came here to Hoberton. I always loved computers. I completed the first nine months of the program, decided to continue for the uh, machine learning specialization. And here I am now graduating from that. Through the Hoberton journey, I became a student tutor, and I always loved helping other students um, understand the, the key concepts that were taught here in the curriculum. And when I graduated the first nine months, I was working at another company as a software engineer until Mercy gave me a call offering me to come back to Hoberton as the education lead and software engineer for all the students here at Hoberton. So I said yes and came back finalized, uh, finished my specialization, and here I am today presenting to you, to you my project. So what is better help? As I said earlier, it's a mobile application, and as Mercy said, it helps you decide which hospitals you would like to visit. How do we do this? We use machine, uh, machine learning model to access the Google Maps APIs for the reviews of that hospital and pass those reviews to the OpenAI API to analyze them and let you know if there are positive reviews, negative reviews, or neutral reviews. And as you see here in the picture, when you open the app, you get all the hospitals that are near your location. Right now it's at a 5,000 radius from your location. Uh, each of those markers are hospitals. When you click some of those, one of those markers, it's gonna go and search all of the reviews and analyze them. And it's gonna tell you an overall review if it's red, it's negative. If it's green, it's positive. If it's gray, it's neutral. And if you just slide up, at first, the, the panel is only going to show onto here. If you slide up the panel, it's going to divide into different categories and do the same for each of those categories. Tell you if it's negative, if it's positive, or if it's neutral. Which technologies do we use? We use Plotter for the design of the application. We use um, Firebase. So for storing the data, we use JavaScript for the functionality with the machine learning model. And for the machine learning, the specific machine learning model that we use, we use sentiment analysis, which is a natural language processor model that help us analyze those reviews using keyword extraction, which means that it's going to go through all of the words inside of the text and analyze each of those words to know if it's a good word, a bad word, a neutral one. And from then, from there, decide if it's a positive, bad, or neutral review. In terms of timeline, we first collected the data. We prepared that data so it could work with the model. We built the model. We fine-tuned it by training it with the data we prepared earlier. We evaluated that model to see if it was giving us the desired output. And we deployed the model to connect it with the application itself. In terms of challenges, 
The first one, the major one was a change of plans because initially we wanted to make the app suggest a hospital based on wait time, client patient volume. Uh, but when we were going to gather that data, we found that that type of data is not easily accessible. So we had to change plans because without data, we can't make the machine learning model work or do all the, the stuff it needs to. So we had to change plans and we decided to go on with the reviews. Connecting the machine learning model with the application. We, my partner worked on the machine learning model while I worked on the design of the application. And when, when it got time to connect both, it got a little bit of an error because the application connects first with the Google Maps API to collect all the reviews and then passes it to the OpenAI API, which works with the machine learning model. And the way it was receiving the data, it was um, uh, giving it some type of error. So we had to tweak it a bit until we managed to, to connect it. And time management. At the time, we were both full-time students, uh, full-time job, uh, job, sorry. And we had to manage our times between studying, working, whenever we wanted to meet up to start working on the project. Some last minute meeting came for him or for me, and it was a little bit difficult, but we managed to to work it, to make it work. As for future features we would like to implement to the application, we would like it to be able to give you the power to review the hospital yourself. Right now, only features hospital reviews made on Google Maps. We want to include making your own reviews. We wanted to be able to sign in, create an account, save your medical medical card information in the application. So when you go to the hospital, you can show that information and be a quicker check-in to the hospital. And we wanted to show the directions to the hospital. Right now, it only shows you the information, but if you want to get there, you will have to use Google Maps to get there. We want to implement the direction system to our application itself. And basically, that's the presentation. Thank you all for being here. I'll be there in the back to answer questions. Thank you, Jonathan. As, as he mentioned, he is now oops, our software engineer in education league. So he's uh, doing several things at a time. Great job. Um, I think they were all amazing projects. I don't know about you. Please give them a big round of applause. <laughs> they work very hard uh, on this. In fact, if you're not very familiar with the way Holperton works, our students are full-time students. They had to quit their job, so they had to reduce the amount of hours and, and working part-time. The average age of our students is 25 to 29. So these are students that have financial responsibilities already. They have rent to pay or a mortgage or they have kids. So it's really uh, for many of them or for most of them a sacrifice to actually come and study at Holberton for the first nine months as a full-time student. So for that reason, we have a scholarship fund uh, that's managed by La Fundación Comunitaria de Puerto Rico. The scholarship funds out of that uh, are not to pay for tuition. It's to provide stipends for students who have economic needs who otherwise would have to drop out or not join Holberton at all. 